Hey, what's up guys? Today we're gonna look at how to control your lighting software from pay playback by sending MIDI cues to whatever lighting software you have. Um, we're not gonna get into the uh, whole lot of detail as far as the lighting software goes. Um, I will give you a quick overview of how to connect and how to send MIDI signals to it, but any lighting software that receives MIDI signals will work with this. So let's get started. <music> All right, so the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to want to, and this really only has to be done once between the two computers. Um, you're gonna to wanna to go to Spotlight and go to MIDI, uh, Audio MIDI Setup. If you search MIDI, it should pop up and be one of the top ones, Audio MIDI Setup. We'll click that, and typically, this will not be the first window you see. You'll usually see, there, let's exit out of that. Um, you'll usually see this window which is your audio devices um we're not really messing with audio right now we're going to be going for midi so you'll want to come to the window tab and click show midi studio then you'll get to this here now uh you're going to want to look at your network sessions typically it's going to be like a little world globe here um depending on what uh, what version of software and iOS that you're using. It may look a little different. Sometimes if it's uh, real small like this, you won't see anything. You have to click the little arrow um, and then come over here to open MIDI network settings. Uh, but if you pull this out, it should be a little globe. You click that and you'll see where it says MIDI network setup. So what you're going to do is you're going to want to create a session. Um, I have several sessions because, because I control several different things from the one computer on Sunday mornings from playback um, that are controlling lights, sometimes pro presenter, sometimes uh, uh, actually most of the time our auto tune our pitch correction software that uh, for our live stream. So we'll create a session, you can name it whatever you want. I've created it called stage with parentheses and lights because it's coming from my stage computer. And this is the session that we're gonna use for lights. Um, now, typically I don't have my lighting computer on right now. Um, but you can connect one of two ways. You can either connect over Wi-Fi. They just both have, both computers have to be connected to the same Wi-Fi network for this to work if you're doing it over Wi-Fi. Or you can hardwire it, which is what we've done, which is why we can see, um, we've manually put the IP addresses in, which is why we can see this right here without actually being connected. Now, it wouldn't let me connect to it. It would give me an error because I'm not plugged in. Uh, but what you would do is you would select your session, select the computer that you're going to connect to, whether it's Wi-Fi or hardwire. Required, we'd select the lights computer and select connect. I'm not going to do it right now because it's just going to give me an error because I'm not connected. But once you select the computer and hit connect, it will um, it will pop up right here and say uh, that tell you right here on this computer which uh, computer you're connected to. So this lights computer would show up right there. And then if you go to your lights computer and pull up the same um, this same uh, window you would see that it's connected to my computer. Um, so once that's connected, that's all you have to do um, to be to be able to send MIDI signals between the computers. So if we open up playback um, and we go to our settings, we're gonna go over to MIDI and then we're gonna be putting everything in this lights one bus. Um, it gives you the option of where you want to send the MIDI signal to. So we're gonna open this up and you'll see that we have the network stage lights. That's the, I'll deselect it for now. Um, so when you first pull it up, you would see this is, these are all the things you can connect to. So we're gonna connect to that networks, network session and then we're gonna turn it on. I, I usually just leave that on all channels. Certain instances you have to be going down the right channel. This usually works, just kind of all channels is fine. Um, so once that's set up, that's it. That's all the settings that you have to do to be able to let playback connect and communicate with your other computer. So now I'm gonna go into a, a little bit of the setup, how I use Ableton and playback in conjunction to easily program lights for our Sunday morning uh, experiences. So I have a file that I've created and you can just create this from scratch, uh, but I have a file in Ableton that I've created um, with all of these um, MIDI cues here okay so essentially the way you do that is you would just come in here uh let's just create a new one for right now just for for demonstration purposes but i'll set i'll select insert new midi track um and then we'll just double click here and that adds a midi bar there i don't know what to call it there but um placeholder and then down here you've got your keyboard uh 
laid out. I'll bring this up. And you can see it goes all the way from C negative 2 all the way up to G8. Anyway, so you'll create, I'm going to delete this, but you'll create MIDI cues that are all unique. All right. So each one of these, if I, if I double click on this, you can see that there is one note in here. And this one, if I hover over, it's E0, right? None of these other ones are going to have E0. You want to make sure that they're all unique. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go in and create as many as we need. And you can see what I've created here. Um, I've created a section for our backdrop, for our um, combo moving heads, uh, for our down shots, up shots, just, you know, different sections. And this correlates with our light in software. So we've got these same sections in our light in software and I've named them what they do. So this one is going to be a blue <laughs> static backdrop. All right. These are backdrops that are, are combination backdrops and so on and so forth. So once you get all of these set as an individual and unique, um, uh, MIDI note, then you're set up and that corresponds with your lighting software and the, and the, um, scenes that you've created. Um, then you're set up and ready to go. Now in your lighting software, you will need to go in and, um, connect depending on what your lighting software is. You're going to want to, in each scene set that, Hey, this MIDI note coming in to the software will trigger this scene. So I've gone in like for blue E zero triggers the blue scene in my DMX uh, 3.0. If you're using my DMX 3.0, um, essentially all you do is you go over to the triggers, click the little MIDI button. And when it comes up, you would just play this as long as you're sending it down the right channel, um, uh, uh through that, um, MIDI setup like we did before and it's receiving from there. You would play that. It would automatically pick up what note that is. Then you could click save uh, and so on and so forth. Again, I'm not going to get into the specifics of your lighting software. I just want to show you the concept and how to build out um, programmed lights from uh, playback to whatever lighting software you have. So once you have this file, um, really, this is just kind of a placeholder file. We're not going to really do much work inside of here. We just, it, it's, it's where you set it up and it's where you'll pull from, but that's about it. So we're going to jump over to our song now, uh, and begin to program it there. So I have another live session created for graves into gardens, and this is just how it's downloaded from multitracks.com. Download it opens up just like this. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to want to create a lights track. So this will be a MIDI track because remember we're sending MIDI uh, notes over uh, to our other computers. So we'll, I usually like to put it right under the guide here. Um, so I'll just right click and hit insert MIDI track. And we will name that lights. There we go. Pull that up right below the guide. Uh, and I usually like to kind of open this up a little bit bigger and zoom in a little bit so I can see what I'm doing. Um, all right. So we're going to navigate to that file that we created that was kind of where it said we would be pulling from where we went in and created unique MIDI um, notes for each of the uh, each of the little files. So we're, I've, I've put this under Ableton um, and Lights. Uh, for 10 project for this live 10. So, you, I mean, wherever you save that file, um, you'll go to that and open. You don't want to double click on it because double clicking on it will actually open up that file instead of graves, you know, instead of the song. But you are, you will have the option to drop down to see what's in that file. And these are all of the sections that we created. So you can see um, these were the tracks that we created, static backdrop, combo moving backdrop, so on and so forth. And if you open those up, you'll see each of the individual things that we created. Um, so essentially, I mean, this is very simple. Essentially what we're going to do is we're going to listen through to the song and put whatever we want to happen with the lights at that point in this light track. So um, say we started this song off, right? One, you got your count off. Two. And say right, one, two, right three, at the intro, four, we five, wanted the six. backdrop to to fade into, let's say, blue and white. So we'll come to this combo, because uh, this is one, one that we've created. We'll open it up, and we'll grab this blue and white and drop it right there. Um, you'll see it's the same MIDI note. You know, we created all these MIDI notes. It's going to be the MIDI note that we created. Um, I like to, um, if you zoom in more, you can cut off some of some of this. You don't want to cut off the note itself. Um, so we want that. And let's say we want the 
down lights um because we see we have at our church we have a backdrop and we have like moving heads um so let's say we want the moving heads to be a down shot of uh let's just say this blue star which is kind of like a blue and white um so we want them to come on relatively close to one another so what i like to do is zoom in real close so we can get them a lot closer to one other and then I'll just cut off this tail here. And then so as they're going to hit back to back like real quick. So practically simultaneously. All right. So when that comes on, let's say we want that Mine. to stay uh, stay through verse one and verse two. And let's say when we get to the chorus, say we want the lights to rise up. Um, we have a setting where they start down and they rise up. So we're going to go to moving head up and... Um, white rising up so right at that point i would want that to happen so i'll drop that in so to spare you the time of um watching me go through this entire song putting all of the cues in uh, i'm going to go ahead and pause the video put those in real quick and i'll show you what it look and how to finish it up and what it looks like at the end um, but again it's as simple as dragging and dropping from that database that you've already created so i'm going to go put these in and i'll be right back all right, so I have gone through and put all of the cues for this song that I want to put in there. As you, if you zoom in here, you can see uh, all of all of the all of them, <laughs> little ones. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to create this all as one file. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in here. I'm going to take this um, because so this is based off of time. We're going to upload this. Um, one of the reasons I use it from multitracks.com um, and the original recording is because that is what is going to be in playback so it's consistent. Um, so what it's going to do is it's going to actually, when we upload this, it's going to upload at what time from, you know, the, the time that the click starts, how long, like how many seconds until this one fires, how many seconds till that one fires. So we're going to want to pull this first one back, uh, pull this file back to the beginning so we're making sure that um, oh, what did that do? I don't know why that created another note there. So I don't know why that created another note. So I'm just going to add something here. I just double clicked so I can create some space right here uh, at the beginning so that the timing is all right. So we're going to select the very first here. We're going to scroll to the end, hold down shift and select the last one so that all of these are highlighted and then we're going to right click on one of them and select consolidate so what that will do is that will create one entire file here uh, as you can see down here in the view down here all of the notes and where they're at in the timeline but it's all contained within one file um, I don't know why that renamed that I'm gonna rename this back to lights uh, and rename that back to lights. All right, cool. All right, once you get this, we're going to want to export this file out. So we'll just right, we'll select it again as one file, right click and um, select export MIDI clip. I'm going to pull this over where my Graves into Gardens file is. And I'm just going to name this Lights MIDI in there. And I'm going to hit save. And that exports that one file as a MIDI file out. And that's what we're going to be able to use to upload to Multitrack. So we're going to navigate over to Multitracks.com. And we're going to want to navigate to our library to find Graves into Gardens. So we'll open up Graves into Gardens. And we're going to uh, come over here to this MIDI tab. So we'll click there. And if you remember back, um, if you remember back at the very beginning of the video, we said we said we were going to put it under the lights one bus. So this is important, and I've actually run into a couple times that I upload it to the wrong bus and then have to go back and change it out. So you have all these different buses that you can send out of playback. So we're going to go over to lights one because that's the one that we're going to use. I have a couple in here from a previous time. I'm just going to delete those out um, and show you how to do this. So. Uh, we're going to upload that MIDI file. So we'll select upload MIDI file here. And this is how simple it is, guys. We navigate to where it is. Here it is, lights MIDI. That's where. That's what we named. That's where we put it. We're going to drag and drop it here. And voila, it puts every cue in there ready to go. Now, one thing I do like to do is go in here and select this disable loop on all of them. And the reason I like to do that is because in ADJ, in my ADJ's my DMX 3.0, 
which is the lighting software that we use. Um, if you send the same signal again, like it, so if you send a signal to say, turn the backdrop blue, and then you send that same signal again before like changing it, um, what it's doing is it's selecting it, and then you send it again, it deselects it. Um, so if we put the song in loop or a section in loop, and we have one of these triggers being sent through MIDI, I don't necessarily want it to send the signal again. So what checking this box does is it disables, when we put it in loop mode, it disables the uh, MIDI from sending another signal. So I like to do that depending on your lighting software, it depends on whether you need to do that or not. Uh, but that's what that feature is. Once you're done with that, you'll click save and then you're done. Um, we're gonna navigate over to playback and I'm going to open up the set list for this weekend, which includes um, Graves in the Gardens, and we'll load that up and we'll see how that just automatically syncs right uh, into playback and is ready to go. All right, so we've got Graves in the Gardens uh, queued up here, and you see these little yellow tabs down here. These are all the MIDI cues that, are, that were just imported from that file we just uploaded. Um, uh, if we want to look at them in a little bit more in depth, we can hold down on edit and select MIDI cues and then we can select each one of these and go through them and cycle through them and see what MIDI um, note is being sent and we can click on it and edit it. If we change our mind and we want to edit it, um, we can do that. Or if we forget to do the disabled loop um, from the website, you can enable that on each of those there. Um, but again, the important thing is one of the important things at this stage is, is to make sure that you're sending it to the right bus. Right, we'll hit done, and then we're gonna want to make sure that that bus is set up to go where we want it to go, which is is it's set up this way here. So lights one bus is set up to go to my stage uh, lights computer. So that is how you program lights uh, the easiest way using Ableton and playback and just going in there with the song and just dragging and dropping those MIDI files uh, over and then exporting that out. Now you can go in and manually put each of these in and reference what MIDI signal you need to do but to me it's easier to create that database file and then go in Ableton and just drag and drop. Um, hope this helped you guys out and hope um, uh, you uh, are able to program lights a little bit easier with playback and Ableton.